Um, once again to the Heinz Legal webinar, a uh, regular deep dive into the weird, wonderful world of strata and management rights in Queensland. I'm Chris Irons. Hello, everybody. I'm Director of StratasOlve. That's stratasolve.com.au. As always, virtually alongside, uh, metaphorically, whatever you want to call it, is Frank Higginson, partner at Heinz Legal, the premier provider of legal advice to the strata industry in Queensland. Frank, hello. Hello, Chris. Hello, everyone. Yet again. Yet again. Frank, what's what's been happening? Uh, everything, mate. Um, I don't know what it is, but uh, it's just relentless at the moment. And I will say I'm not quite delivering uh, the way I normally do. Just got that much stuff coming in sideways, left field, urgent, dropped on me, and then suddenly, yeah, pushes some things that aren't less, that are less urgent behind, and then suddenly they become urgent. It just becomes an unfortunately self-fulfilling cycle. So it's interesting. It's good to be busy. I'm not saying yeah. no to it, but um, it's pretty hectic. It's hard though, That's getting that scary. balance. Um, and I, I guess, same for me, and I guess what that tends to mean, Frank, is that there's a lot going on in Strata World, not necessarily dispute-based either, no. but um, this is about clarification, uh, about putting things right in a lot of places. That I think there's a fair bit of that going on. Uh, and um, yeah, I, I think it's part of a general picture of strata just becoming more, not, not so much strata becoming more and more prominent, but people deciding to take more of an engaged stance on yeah. strata. Put it yep, that way. Absolutely. More voices create more questions, which is then more work for all of us sort of thing, you know, and it's sort of some of the questions I think are probably legitimate and some mightn't be, but there you go. <laughs> it's always the art of the filter, isn't it? And we, we are but one of those voices. <laughs> yes. uh, what are we going to put our voices towards on this broadcast? Well, we're going to do something. Uh, we'll get to that in just a bit. But just to remind everyone, a bit, bit of quick housekeeping. Uh, for anyone who's listening in live via our YouTube channel, you can post your questions in the chat and we will do our darndest to get to those uh, as best we can. We always appreciate questions posed to us. Keeps us on our toes. Um, uh, but if you're off walking the dog, you're listening to this later, you're off walking the dog or doing the dishes or whatever, you can find all the notes and links we refer to at heinzlegal.com.au. This week, Frank, it's a bit of a, it's another one of our famous how-to mm. events. Mm. Uh, one that we, um, we sort of thought about for a while, how we're going to try and stage this one. So this week, how to search for adjudicators orders. We bang on about that every week, don't we? We do. Pretty and much. I mean, it's the core of what we do. And it, it is that, um, well, adjudication, it, it's interpretation, it's sort of clarification of circumstances and all that sort of stuff that is the legislation. So, and, and having been through, I suppose, the law reform process now, you know, it's, it's, you've done more of it than I have, mate, but I can tell you I'm enjoying it. Um, particularly with the new modules, you go through the consultation periods and you have these big discussions about, whatever it might be, and should we do this, and should we do that, and, you know, eventually there's some sort of consensus reached or not reached, and government comes out with legislation. And inevitably, as we did probably two years back now when the modules first arrived, despite all of that, there's still gaps. Mm. And, and so there's this element of, um, and, and it's even interesting from a lawyer's perspective, you get lawyers from other jurisdictions come into Queensland, um, and you would definitely apply that from a strata perspective. I think we've probably got the most prescriptive strata legislation across the different modules, including Bugta, than almost any other state in Queensland and certainly almost any other country in the world, you'd almost say. And people come in here as lawyers and say, crikey, what a nanny state you guys are running. You know, you've got all this regulation, you've got blah, blah, blah. And I get that in one sense. And then on the other hand, there's still gaps. So despite that nanny state, it is still not completely filled. And I don't know, so this is one for policy, um, what the answer is. Because unless you're going to go and try to dictate what's going to happen in every single circumstance, which means that every piece of legislation is going to be 50,000 pages long, you're always going to have the need for someone to independently adjudicate, interpret and decide on things that might not be as clear in the legislation as you might otherwise get. And that's all you want. And that's what adjudication, that's what courts do. Yep. You know, it, it, the courts might be deciding 
in a litigious sense. If the chief said he did a deal, he said, no, we didn't do a deal. Okay, that's an argument about who's got better credibility and that sort of stuff. But when it's down to statutory interpretation, which a lot of adjudications to me probably are, that's where Osley and the Commissioner's Office and the adjudications that are published become so important. That's right, Frank. Um, well said. That's a great. That's a great kind of context set up. Um, so uh, it's the how to search for orders that we're sort of talking about today. We're going to be looking shortly uh, when we do a bit of screen sharing in a minute or two. We're going to be looking at the website where you do that. It's called. Ostly for short, and they're a not-for-profit, so we're not getting any referrals or any commissions. They're, they're, they're doing it for the love, which sounds like a weird thing to say, but they are. Um, they are. Um, quick reminder, and the access there is free as well, so it's a massive resource to um, avail yourself of. Let's have a very quick uh, 101 refresher about adjudicators' orders, Frank, for everybody listening. Legally binding. So these are orders which can be enforced and appealed. Every single order is published. Uh, so that means every order that is dismissed uh, as well as every order which is accepted. Uh, it includes declaratory orders. So those are the orders to change financial years, for example. It also includes interim and emergency orders. There are such a thing as those. It also, Frank, includes referee orders made under the bugs. Hmm. So adjudicators, for bugger purposes, aren't adjudicators, they're referees. Unfortunately, probably don't have a whistle. And they don't have yellow or red cards as much as probably some of them might like to from time to time. Um, so, yeah, so when there's a bug to dispute that does fall within the jurisdiction of the Commission's office, because not all bug to disputes do, um, the adjudicators act as referees for the purposes of making those decisions. Probably the biggest reminder of all that we would make is that uh, orders are not precedent. So adjudicators are not bound by the, the so-called precedent established by another adjudicator, even though they might literally be sitting side by side. They're not necessarily bound. Having a, a stress, they will endeavour, I think it's fair to say, pretty much all the time to try and be as consistent as possible. Uh, it doesn't automatically follow that the order in one case is the order made in the next case, even if the circumstances are just about identical. Yeah. But uh, the way I always look at it, Frank, they're great guidance, aren't they? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and you can, um, if you go digging, and I suppose what I do, um, and there's going to probably be some viewers out there or listeners that... Uh, uh, strata nerds, a little bit probably like us. All of the all of the decisions that I think are important or that I reference relatively regularly, I've created a folder in my Google yep. Google account, Google system, Google profile, whatever it might be, um, and I save them. Yep, or, or, me too. Or, so uh, I must have about sixty or seventy of the more regular ones there that are. I suppose for me that primary guidance and that and maybe the leading decision in my view on that particular topic or that issue but it can happen and, and i think what i say to clients in terms of adjudications is you, you get the facts and circumstances and yes they might be largely identical but particularly when it comes to general meeting stuff and arguments about general meetings my take is adjudicators usually try to follow the votes mm, mm, They're not going to mm. knock things over on a technicality just because something might not have been done right if the vast majority of owners are supportive right. of whatever it is that's going on so if something's won by 90 votes to two and there's a technical argument from the two uh more often than not they'll yeah. go the way of the 90 but if the position was reversed they could quite happily go the way of the yeah. 90 in, in opposition for the technical thing that the two didn't do right so it's it's interesting absolutely all right we're going to go we're going to delve into it now uh so we've got our host uh for this event and our host is going to share screen and we're going to take you to the landing page for Osley. just have a look at some of the basic functionality
uh, not so much the current, but sort of the recent yeah, additions uh, to it all. Hello. For I'm a second, hopeful. Chris. Right. Ah, can you hear me now, Frank? I can. Yep. And let's see how you go with the voice and the screen. All right. Um, can we can we get the screen any bigger at all? It's a bit bit tricky to see. How good's the technology? This is great. It's like a PowerPoint screen that dies midway through. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll keep going. We'll keep going. Uh, so um, if we click now on, uh, so that landing page is full of all of the most recent additions. If we click now on the Queensland button. So this is everything germane to Queensland. And you can see that, look, if you want to go through to the district court, and all the rest of it, you can go for your heart's content there. Um, if we look, uh, there's a, a listing there for uh, Queensland. Uh, sorry, let me just bring it up myself. Um, uh, to, to our host there, if you want to scroll down to, uh, it's the, Third, the third tab up the top, we've got all, we've got Queensland case law and we've got Queensland legislation. If we want to click on Queensland legislation, this is where you can actually directly uh, access body corporate legislation. Uh, and this actually, for, for some people, I think, Frank, they would be very used to dealing with the legislation.qld.gov.au yes. website. Yes. This is actually a pretty good alternative. And I think it actually helps in terms of some of the searchability because Ausley tends to link around with decisions and all that sort of stuff, whereas the Queensland government website doesn't necessarily do that. So I'd say internally, whenever we're doing research, um, for me, it's Ausley. Yep. That's my okay. default position with everything. All right. So, so you hit legislation, mod, uh, regulations, repealed legislation, acts is passed. If you want to be really specific and see what the BCC of Act said in 1997, you can go back and look at that 1997 Act before it was amended in 2003, before it was amended in 2008, you can see the versions. So there's a complete historical database of everything. Now, if we go back uh, any to the all button, thank you. We scroll down maybe halfway. Uh, the way I always notice everybody, it's the longest entry on the <laughs> list. If we click on that, that takes us to our adjudicators listing, our adjudicators order listing. Uh, so here's a tip for everyone. If you bookmark that page uh, now, uh, you can come back to that on a regular basis and see when orders are updated. So the way, the way it works is that the commissioner's office will upload orders as they're made. There was a bit of a time lag there a few months ago where there were, I think, a couple of months sort of out of whack on that, but they're more or less up to date now. But you can return to that bookmark over and over and maybe refresh and you will see the latest additions. Um, so when you see people like self or Frank or whomever put out a post about, oh, did you see this new case? Did you see that that's where we find it from in that particular instance? Um, so what we've got there are all of the orders listed by the ones that uh, they start from the most recently published. We might open up uh, an order at random, or not an order at random because we have actually pre-planned this, <laughs> um, but we might open up an order at random. So any that's the next one on the list or on, that, on the next link. And Chris, really interestingly, just... Um... It's funny, I'm sitting here looking at this website, not going where I need to go. So I suppose it's the difference between uh, what I'd say is husband shopping and wife shopping. Husband shopping is go in, grab, go. Wife shopping <laughs> is just sit out around for hours and mingle and look and blah, 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 and maybe not buy anything. But anyway, um, as, as misogynist as that might be. No, just that's, looking at the, let's call it traditional. Yeah, the most recent is the most recent cases. All then right. there's a little tab there for most cited. And there's also one there for the most accessed. And the most accessed Ostley case for the BCCM office is Artic, which is, is the one right? on smoking. And I've never checked that tab before. Right. Never and checked that, that tab. And that was only six or seven months ago. 
2000, yeah, absolutely. So, and they're saying here, database statistics, nearly 14,000 documents, 281,000 accesses in the last 12 months. That's how many searches there've been of this database. That tells you something, doesn't it, Frank? Yep. It tells you that the, the, the interest levels in this sort of thing are really high up. We've got a few questions there about orders too. We'll, we'll get to those. We'll go back to that order we were looking at. Frank, do you just want to walk everybody through just from maybe top to bottom about what all the different sort of bits mean in this order? It is hard. Yeah, okay, cool. So interestingly enough, all of the orders are named by the building. So if it was Chris Iron suing Higginson Towers, uh, it would be referred to as Higginson Towers. I shouldn't say sue, we make an application against because you don't sue people in this kind of Kind of the same, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah sort of thing. So you, you're bringing someone to, to heal, but regardless of who is the applicant, it's referred to by the building name. So I suppose that depersonalizes a little bit. Um, and for sport, if you're really interested, you can go and scroll through and you'd certainly see some buildings that are there more than others. Um, with all good legal things, um, there's a citation. So just to the right of the building name is that citation. So that'll be the year, um, QBCCCM CMR 234. So that's the commissioner's office case 234 of, of 200, 2022. The same as every Supreme Court, District Court, Magistrates Court thing that's reported has a listing. Um, Citations, pretty simple. It's the name of the building. It, it's certainly the parties then get named further down. So who are the people that are actually involved in this dispute? Um, the scheme, which is the dispute. And then um, the jurisdiction is, is how the adjudicators actually get their jurisdiction to make a decision on this particular matter. And what they'll do is they'll mention that there straight up. So there's no argument that they can't be making a decision with respect to this. Um, the application number and the decision date are obviously relevant. Um, the decision of the adjudicator itself, because how many in there, Chris? Six or seven? Uh, seven at the moment with apparently more to come. Right, okay. Because there was a bit of a budget increase for adjudication, yep. wasn't there? Or the commissioner's office. Um, so they'll name the adjudicator that actually makes the decision. They don't. Um, and, uh, sorry, I was just going to say, Frank, they don't name the adjudicator by first name or gender, interestingly. <laughs> There you go, little tricks. Um, and then some catchwords. So what this is actually about. So, um, and that's the same, that that presentation is fairly consistent with yeah. what goes on in every reported court decision. It just might take a slightly different look, but even if you go interstate, they've all got that same sort of basic detail. And then more importantly, uh, you come down to the actual orders. So what, ha what orders have been made? So. I'm granting this order, I'm dismissing this order, um, I'm granting part A and, and not granting part B or whatever it might be. So if you really want to cut to the chase, you can see the outcome then straight away. And then after that is the reasons for the decision. And as Chris was saying before, this um, jurisdiction is really interesting in the context of the adjudicators have the ongoing unfettered ability to make an order that is just and equitable in the circumstances. So those circumstances are all important. So I think if you're ever looking to compare decisions, you've got to make sure you understand the reasons for that decision. And one of the arts of providing legal advice to clients when they've got a particular issue in front of them is making sure that you can distinguish what is relevant to your client's particular case from something that might not be supportive in a previous decision. And I think back to um, one of the questions there, Chris, from uh, Bryce, uh, in terms of are adjudicators bound by Supreme Court judgments? Yes. So the way it works is commissioner's office, as the commissioner's office, can make orders that are just and equitable in the circumstances. But if there has been a decision made by a higher authority, such as the appeal QCAT, Sydney's appeal jurisdiction or the Supreme Court or the High Court, then they are bound by that decision. Full stop. So, um, and again, there's always arguments about how you distinguish things and all the rest of it. But yes, internally, they can do whatever they want, for want of a better phrase, as long as it's just and equitable. But if there's a decision on a particular point of law from a higher jurisdiction court, they're bound by that decision. End of yep. Before we leave that screen, I just want to share one of my sort of 
favoured tips about uh, orders on Ostly. Uh, whenever I read a new order, the first thing I do, apart from reading which adjudicator made it, uh, but that's just me because I know all those people. Um, the first thing I do after that is I go right to the end. So if we can scroll right to the end. There are two sections that become uh, up so above the footnotes. Um, there are two sections which really become relevant for me. There's the conclusion. But usually the thing that's really relevant for me are the paragraphs immediately preceding. The conclusion because think think of the adjudicator's order as a what's a good way of putting it a novel frank or a story a traditional yeah, yeah. traditional story it is telling a story so if you go back to and there are many different ways to tell a story and you know increasingly when you see a movie or a tv series it's all over the place different time zones but the traditional way is start middle end that's how the adjudicator's order goes and if you come to the very last paragraphs before conclusion, you will see what is effectively the finale to the order. You will actually, that to me is usually where you will get most of your value. And yeah. Tell me if you think I'm wrong there, Frank. But no, 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 mate, completely agree. Because I mean, there's always, in, in every order where they've taken submissions, they'll start mm. with what the dispute's about. Then they'll say, we had submissions from blah, 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 supporting it. We had submissions from blah, 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 opposing it. Um, and to be honest, most of the time, I just scroll straight over those because I don't care what people lodged. I care what the yeah. adjudicator is saying about what they're lodged and they're absolutely going to pick the stuff that's relevant and yep. put that towards the back end in the conclusion and explain how they get to their decision. So, but I, I would stress to everybody listening, don't simply do that and do nothing else. That would be a huge mistake. But go to that bit. This is what I do. It won't work for everyone, but I go there first. I read that, and then I kind of work backwards from that. Go back through the uh, the first bits, the analysis. Um, it's a good way of getting diving right in, rather than wading through the start, middle, finish bit. Um, gosh, time is really flying. So we're going to just try. I think we might only have time for one search term today. Frank, uh, given the time that's left. So if we, and you can scroll right back up to the top, please. So in that search box up there, uh, Annie, could you type in large dog? There's no arguments about pets in the commissioner's office, Chris. No, and, and so what that term has resulted in is a list of everything where large dog is mentioned. Um, there's a significant list there, isn't there? <laughs> um, so, Frank, uh, from your perspective, I, I mean, you uh, being a law firm would um, have to frequent this database. Yeah. Um, where would you go from that point? Where, what, what's your general approach from here? Well, I suppose with pets, I mean, um, we've done a thousand of them. I've got a couple of favourite ones that I always sort of come back to. And this is also a really interesting one where, um, actually the question about jurisdiction, we had a um, malodorous dog, <laughs> um, which at the time, um, Tim Carmody, who you might recall all from Campbell Newman's uh, step into the Supreme Court there in his tenure, uh, was running QCAT and um, he delivered a decision uh, in QCAT about carrying dogs on common property and dogs that were smelly and all this sort of stuff. So um, yeah. that's a decision that then became binding on lower courts. So that, that from the Commissioner's Office. But Chris, back to your question, I think the more specificity you can give in relation to the words, the better off you are. So where I tend to go, large dogs are very general search term. I put that in. Um, I then try to filter the decisions probably by year. So I don't necessarily need to see a decision from 2004. I want the one from 2022. So I'd look at some of the more recent decisions and I might use an and, large dog and, something else like another phrase that goes with it, large well, dog and smell. It's a good one. All right. So let's try that, uh, large dog and smell. 
and then we will see what we come up with. So that has refined our list somewhat. And then we'll try and do that by date. And, uh, for what it's worth, Frank, I agree with you that I would um, go by date as well. Um, in, don't don't get this wrong, everybody. An order made back in two thousand and five, for argument's sake, um, might be just as relevant, yeah. if far more so than anything more recently. And, and those old orders get frequently cited. They do, and I just find probably for me the more recent ones might cite some of the older ones in different parts. So it's almost. The adjudicators in one way can do some of your research for you because they're going to pull all the bits and pieces yep. from previous adjudications and link them in this most recent one um so we've got large dog and smell where might we i've got a few minutes left frank gee that's whizzed by where might we go where might be sorry where might we go after that point well mate i'd be looking at the most recent ones and be starting to have a scroll and I'd be doing exactly what you said in terms of going towards the tail end of the thing. I'd look at the decision. I'd look at the outcome of the decision. I'd look at a quick scan of the head note, and then I thought, oh, if that's not relevant, I'll move on to the next one. If it is relevant, then I'd go to the back end of it and look at the conclusion and the why, and see, okay, that might be more relevant. And I suppose that isn't in one way a very effective process, but that's what legal research sometimes is. You've got to look at a bunch of things. And that's why we have junior lawyers, because it's not effective for me to do it at my hourly rate, but it's certainly effective for junior lawyers or paralegals to spend the time scouting around. Because A, they're, they've just finished their degree, so they're probably more um, experienced yeah. in research, um, and they're cheaper. So go yeah. do some digging, and this is the stuff we're looking for. Yeah, uh, I think that's, that's one of the best pieces of advice that we can give everyone who's listening to this, is that get in, get your hands dirty on the searching. Uh, you will make mistakes. You will find yourself down a rabbit hole you don't want to be down. But it's through that process that you'll actually get a bit of refinement about how you do it. And look, I, I'll freely admit, um, I, I don't always hit the right order straight up or even second or third or fourth time. Um, you have to keep going. And also remember, I think this is a really good point for everybody, just because you find one order that, seems to support what you want and you go hallelujah um don't forget somebody is, is also searching to find the exact counterpoint on what you just said it, isn't that right frank absolutely because you want to be able to a put forward your argument and b knock the other arguments against your argument down and inevitably if you were going to have an argument about pets those things have been litigated ad nauseum in the commissioner's office so to me You'd want to look at all of as many cases as possible. More of the recent ones, you don't have to read every one because there's going to be hundreds of them. <clears throat> but if you did it over, a, you know, you look at the last two years, there's probably dozens. That's probably going to give you a fair feel for what it is that's going on if you're yeah. starting from scratch. Uh, question there from oh, David. You had a couple of questions. Thanks, David. What's the best way to search by legislative section? The section numbers change at each revision. That's right. Uh, so um, always make sure you're using the most uh, recent reprint, whether it be an act or regulation, David. And then in, in the most recent reprint, there will be a record of what that section number used to be. So if, if it's changed, say it's gone five ahead or one or two back or a brand new section, a brand new part's been inserted, uh, there is a history of how that has been done. So you can refer to that history. Uh, and you're quite right, that's very important. Then you've got a further question. Why are the links to cited legislation usually going to the wrong legislation? Mistakes happen, David, they do. Um, I've got to say, Commissioner's Office is super, super, super thorough on that sort of stuff. But sometimes they will put a link to the wrong section, the wrong act, um, the wrong citation. It just happens. Um, it's human error, isn't it, Frank? Yep, happens. And, yeah. mate, I do recall once when you were Commissioner back in the day, I went looking, we, we had a due diligence on a management rights where we raised an issue and it was all about the end of end, end of financial year date for body corporate. Body corporate had made an application to have it changed, which was approved. And we raised this issue. The other side came back and said, no, no, here's, here's where it was approved. And I went to find it and it wasn't there. There was an email, Chris, there's this one that's missing off your database. I think your response was exactly that. Frank, we're not perfect. 
Okay, mate. Fine. Understand. Sorry. Yeah, just letting you know. Yeah. No, no. no. Yeah, it does. Um, gosh, we've come to the end. Wow. Uh, I think we could probably do that for hours, literally, that, mm. that kind of searching assistance. Um, but for today, on that note, that's all we have time for. Uh, so you can access the notes and the links that we spoke about at hindslegal.com.au. You can access me at stratasolve.com.au. You can access Frank also. Well, you can't access access him physically, but you can access his services at Heinz. You can't access me physically then. Oh, anyway, uh, at heinzlegal.com.au. Um, until next time, Frank, it's been a delight. Always, mate. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, all. Much appreciated. See you next time. Bye-bye.